Hello! In the intro to arrays video, I promised that arrays were a useful tool for having many, many variables all at once, so that instead of just having one object, you could easily create a hundred objects. In this video, I will deliver on that promise, and we're going to create what I showed you in the previous video at the very beginning, which is we're going to have a whole bunch of circles that are all kind of moving around and doing things. I should say at the outset that what I'm going to show you is not the final best version of code that you would make to do this task. Really what you'd want to do is create your own object and then have maybe an array list of those objects, which is all stuff that you don't know what it is. I'm just saying um, the code we're going to produce is going to give you the picture that I described, but it's not the cleanest solution. So, you know, keep at it and eventually we'll remake it again in the cleanest possible way. All right, so let's just review what the code is doing. Um, this line 16 right here is drawing the ellipse, and x, y are two numbers that say where the center of the ellipse. So we start x and y as variables that are 300, 300, and then the reason it's moving is because the y variable is going up by 3 every single time we go through the draw loop, and the draw loop happens about 30 times a second. Okay, so uh, let's forget the movement for a second. So I'm actually going to comment all these lines out. And instead, let's just work on, can we have a whole bunch of ball objects all at once? So I said before that if you didn't know about arrays, you would have to do this. You would have, have to create an x2 and a y2 for a second ball, and then an x3 and a y3 for a third ball, and so on. So instead of doing that, what we're going to do is we're going to make two arrays. We're going to make an x-coordinates array and we're going to make a y-coordinates array. All right, well, you'll notice that this is actually just a single float variable. If we wanted to make it an array, you'd need square brackets. And then we'll initialize them in here. So instead of uh, assigning 300, 300 to individual variables, first we have to actually create the array itself. So we'll say new float, and then we need a number in here, which is how many objects there's going to be, or sorry, how many uh, variables in the array there are going to be. So we're going to make an array that has 50 variables. Okay, so y chords equals new float 50. But if you remember what I said, uh, a new array starts out empty. So in the case of an array of floats, that means it's full of zeros. So let's start by having a loop where I'll start my location number at zero and my location is going to go all the way to the end of the list, which is our list are size 50, so I'm going to use 50. And then I'll go up by one location each time. So I'm looping over all the locations in the list, and I'm going to say that my x coordinates at the location I'm looking at right now, and now I'm going to just make some random numbers. So I'm going to cast a float, and I'll say math.random times 600. I'm using 600 because that's the size of the window. And then the same thing for the y-coordinates. So I'm going to assign a random x-coordinate and a random y-coordinate. Okay, so, so far so good. So we create the arrays, and then we loop over and assign random initial coordinates. Coordinates. Okay, so now inside the draw loop, well, let's see. A single ellipse statement will only draw one circle. So if we have 50 of them, we'd actually need 50 ellipse statements. So we could do this if we wanted to. We could say x chords 0 and y chords 0. And that would display the ellipse whose coordinates are in location 0. And then I could have another one, x chords 1 and y chords 1. And then I could have another one, x chords 2 and y chords 2. And you can actually run it right now and see that that this actually is doing something. So here, when I run the code, I see three ellipses, and that corresponds to these three ellipse statements. If I run it again, they should be in different spots. Yeah, they're in different spots, because each time I'm reloading the array with different random numbers. In fact, maybe it might be nice to just display what's in the arrays. So let's do this, system.out.println, so x, and then I'll display arrays.toString, and then x chords. 
Because I think it's nice to actually look and see what numbers are in the array, and then you can verify that the ellipses are drawing in a location that makes sense. OK, so let's run it one more time. So you see three ellipses here. And now here is the list of all the x coordinates. Here is the list of all the y coordinates. So we've got an x coordinate of 130 and a y coordinate of 16. So that looks like it's this one. I went over by 130 and down by 16. And then we've got one that's over by 468 and down by 189, which is probably this one here. And then we've got one that's over by 310 and down by 322, and that's probably this one. Okay, but the whole point of arrays, of course, is I don't want to have to have 50 different ellipse statements here. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to draw an ellipse at a variable location. And we'll have a for loop, which makes this number start at 0 and then go up to the end of the list. So we'll say for int location starts at 0 and location is less than 50. And we'll add 1, just like we did up here in the uh, initialization section. Because the whole point is we want to loop over all the locations in the list. So here, again, looping over all the locations in the list. Except this time, instead of assigning numbers, we're going to get the numbers out of the list and use them to tell the computer to draw an ellipse at those two coordinates. So now when I run it, my lord, there's so many. Oh, uh, let's actually close this, this thing that's drawing. I don't want to do that anymore. So I can run it a bunch of times, and you'll see there's, there's more in different spots every time I run it. OK, let's, all, let's make them all move. So if I want them to move, I know I need to change the y coordinate. So let's do this. Inside the same loop, um, because we already know that that's visiting all of the locations in the list, I could say let's take the let's take the y coordinate at the location we're at and let's add 3 to it. And then we'll save that back inside the same array variable. So we'll take a y coordinate, we'll add 3, we'll save it right back to that same spot. So what that means is that we're displaying the ellipse at a certain spot, and then we change the y coordinate. And then the next time we come through the draw loop, when we get the y coordinate out, it's going to be 3 larger, because we added 3. So let's take a look at that now. Cool. So now they're all moving at the same speed. And they all go off the bottom of the screen. So if we wanted them to recycle, we could add the same kind of if statement. We'd say if the y coordinate at the location we're looking at is bigger than 600, then let's set the y coordinate at the location we're looking at back to be 0. OK, so far so good. Great, so now they're recycling. As we send them off the bottom, they're changing their y coordinates to go back to the top. As an exercise, what might be nice is let's create a third list called speeds. And you should use this loop to assign random speeds. And then you should change this line so that instead of adding 3 to the y coordinate, you look up whatever the speed of that object is supposed to be. So all these speeds here are going to be different speeds, one for each object. OK, I'm assuming that if you wanted to do this on your own, you would have paused the video. Spoiler alert, I'm going to do it right now. So uh, first thing we need to do is we need to actually create the array. So now I actually have a speeds array, because this only creates a variable. It doesn't actually create the array that goes in the variable. And now here I'll say speeds location equals, uh, what do I want my speeds to be? Let's think, math.random times 8. But then I'm going to have my slowest speed be 1. So I'm always at speed 1, and then optionally up to 7 more than that. All right. And now instead of adding 3, I'll look up what's the speed for that particular ball whose y coordinate I'm trying to change. And now when we run it, they're going at all different speeds. As a final challenge, if you look at the draw loop that I have right now, I've added a line. I've added this fill line, which uses the color command. And you remember that it takes three inputs, a number for how much red, how much green, and how much blue to mix together to form a new color. 
So what I've done is I've created three arrays that store random amounts of red, green, and blue, which describe the color I want to use for each ball. And then here in the loop, when I loop over every location, I start by changing the color of the paint that I'm gonna use to be the exact mixture of red, green, and blue that I wanna use for that ball. So that's a much nicer visual effect. Um, and I leave it to you to figure out how to initialize all that stuff properly up at the top. Other things you could try is you could create an array that stores sizes, so all the objects are different sizes. You could modify this code so that when a ball goes off the screen, you randomly reset its color to be a different color. Or I'm sure you have a whole bunch of other ideas that I haven't even thought of.